Good morning. Welcome to February's Talk Time. Today, we are going to talk about Mrs. Katherine Johnson. She worked for NASA for 33 years, and she was very instrumental in helping to get many successful lifts off to space. And in fact, she started right when first men's first started going into space. And she was actually on one of the help calculate numbers that would get the men into space. And her, she was actually for the calculating numbers for the first gentleman that traveled into space. And he only lasted 15 minutes and 22 seconds, but it was successful and history was made. So let's learn a little bit more about Mrs. Katherine Johnson today. I'm gonna to share a quick PowerPoint with you all. We're going to get back to the beginning. So let's begin. Actually, Mrs. Katherine Johnson helped men arrive, walk on the moon for the very first time. So who was Miss Katherine Johnson? Mrs. Katherine Johnson was born on August 26, 1918, and she was born in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. And if you if you live here in North Carolina, this is North, the state of North Carolina. And here if the museum is located right over here in the northeast corner of North Carolina. So to get to West Virginia in living here in northeastern North Carolina, you have to travel through the state of Virginia and then into West Virginia. And I think I think it would take us about four hours and 45 minutes to get to where Mrs. Johnson was born. So how did she become, get her education? Mrs. Johnson, she was very smart and she loved to count. They say that she would count the steps that she walked. She would count the steps up to the church. Uh, she would even sometimes try to count the stars in the sky, but there was just way too many. But she did love to count. She actually skipped several grades in elementary. And actually, by the time she was 10, she was graduating from high school. In fact, she actually skipped past her brother her older brother in school, and he was not very happy about that. Mrs. Johnson, she ended up having to move to go to high school because her school did where she lived at did not offer high school for colored people. So her family moved and she actually graduated from high school at the age of 14. And then she went on to attend West Virginia State College, and she actually graduated at the age of 18 with high honors. That means that she was very smart and she graduated at the top of her class. So what was her career like? Mrs. Johnson at first started as a math teacher. She loved math, so she shared her love by teaching because in her times, Women, their jobs mainly were teaching and for nursing. And with the love of numbers, Mrs. Johnson elected to teach students. However, she did hear later on that NASA or was hiring or the aeronautical, aeronautical laboratory for the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. They were hiring women to compute, basically to tabulate numbers so she applied. However, by the time her application reached the center, the jobs had already been filled. However, with patience, Mrs. Johnson did land that job in 1953, where she went to work. And she helped, she was considered a computer, and she helped make calculations for the men, the engineers that designed airplanes and the flight plans. 
However, Miss Johnson, she was not only patient, but she was pretty persistent. She, the men would come to them wanting to calculate. And Mrs. Johnson, she was just constantly asked questions and asked questions over and over and over. Well, finally, the men got tired of asking them. And guess what? Miss Johnson, she was allowed into the meetings to ask her questions instead of the men having to continuously go back and forth. So her persistence earned her a space in meetings for only men. So um, as a computer, she would again complete calculations on a mechanical tabulating machine and later a computer. But guess what? Not all astronauts are gonna trust the tabulations on a computer. And who are they gonna call? They're going to call Miss Katherine Johnson. So Mrs. Johnson, she actually assisted um, on one the first mission, a mission um, that was May the fifth, nineteen sixty one, and that mission, Alan Shepard actually only stayed in. Um, he did a trajectory of fifteen minutes and twenty seconds, basically an arch, and he. Um, was only in space. Well, however, he became the first American to fly in space, even only for 15 minutes and 22 seconds. And as you can see, we do have a picture of Mr. Shepard. Then she also assisted in the mission that it, um, included John Glenn, which was on February the 20th, 1962. And he was on the Friendship 7 capsule. But he became the first American to orbit Earth three times. And he actually orbited Earth in three times in around five hours. However, Mr. Glenn, he's the astronaut that did not trust the calculations of a computer. So who did he call? He called Miss Katherine Johnson to check all the numbers to make sure that they were correct. So um, then she, Mrs. Johnson also was a part of the Apollo 11 that landed on the moon July the, 16th, July the 20th, 1969, that was watched by millions of Americans. This was like a huge event for the United States because of course we landed men on the moon for the first time. And the three men that were on the Apollo 11 mission was Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Edwin Buzz Aldrin. And I'm pretty sure we've all heard the, we've all heard those names over the years. And when we finally made the first landing on the moon, what did the famous quote from Neil Armstrong have? One small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. And I can remember hearing that quote all my life. All the men actually returned back to Earth safely on July the 24th, 1969. But however, the, the men were quarantined because they had actually stepped foot on the moon. And they weren't sure if maybe they brought something back with the men like a, um, some type of organism that might harm the society. So the three men were placed in like a camper trailer for quite a while to make sure that they were healthy and that they could return to their life. So when people were first visiting the men, when, once they returned from the moon, they actually communicated. The men were in, the astronauts were in the trailer and their family, their friends, their co-workers, they were on the outside because they could, they had to quarantine in this travel-like trailer. And they actually even loaded the trailer that the men were quarantined in and shipped it back to Houston until they were able to come off of quarantine. And I think some of us know today a little bit about quarantine. So Mrs. Katherine Johnson, she did serve out the rest of her career at Langley 
in Langley, Hampton, Virginia with NASA. She retired after 33 years. And because of her service, service and her contribution to so many successful landings, and even she, Mrs. Johnson, even helped the Apollo 13 who had an explosion in, while they were in space. She even helped them with her calculations to land safely back here on Earth. So they returned back to their family safe. And because of all of her dedication, she was presented in 2015 the President Medal of Freedom from, from President Obama. And of course, today there is a facility at NASA in Hampton, Virginia, named Katherine G. Johnson. So just remember, Mrs. Johnson, she really liked to count. Um, she was uh, all about counting, and she performed some very difficult math problems. But she had to learn from the but she built. She step, gradually stepped her way up to the difficult math problems. So um, if you would like, if, you're, if you have enjoyed our talk time today about Mrs. Katherine Johnson, if you can email me at the Museum of the Abermall or give us a call at the museum, 252-335-1453, we can put together a little packet for you that you can do at home because the museum is open. We're open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. You're free to visit. It does not cost to come into the museum. But in the packet today, we do have a coloring sheet um, of Mrs. Johnson doing some calculations in order to have a successful launch into space. We have it where you can identify the number of space cubs and put the number and color them. And then we have more or less, are there, how many rockets are there? How many stars? How many spacemen? So we have that activity. And of course, my favorite, you can color by number or you can still color by number, but you had to do some calculations like Mrs. Johnson would have to do in order to get what color you need to color. And then of course, we've identified some important words that relate to Mrs. Katherine Johnson, such as engineer, NASA, trajectory, which that means the how, what it will take to launch a spaceship into space and get it back to earth. We have mathematician, which Mrs. Johnson was a mathematician because she calculated all of those numbers. We have the word count because Mrs. Johnson, she liked to count. What did I say? She liked to count how many steps she took, how many steps up to the church that she would have to walk. And then moon because she helped get the astronauts walk on the moon. Teacher because she was a teacher when she first graduated from college. Orbit, because she helped Glenn, she helped astronauts orbit around the Earth. Apollo, that was the shuttle, the capsule that took the men to the moon. Space, just going into space. Earth, because the men would launch from Earth and we live on Earth calculation, what it would take to get into space and get back, rocket ship, and of course, Catherine, because Catherine, you could count on Catherine. So we have all of those activities included, but we also have a little hands-on activity. So in the packet, we have a rocket ship. And you can color your ship. Actually, it has a space window, a window in it. So you could actually maybe put a picture of you in the window. And what you're gonna, what we have is we do have the spaceship. And then we took a larger straw and we bent the top over and we taped it down. And then we have another straw. And what you're gonna do 
once you, you tape your larger straw, you're going to place the smaller straw in it and you can blow, you can count down to blast off. And when you hit blast off, you can blow into your straw and your rocket ship is going to come off of your straw to represent Mrs. Catherine doing her calculations for successful launches and landings back here on Earth. So I hope you have enjoyed talk time today. If you would like to learn more about Mrs. Katherine Johnson, you can go to NASA's website. Also, there's some wonderful books out there on Mrs. Johnson and the titles are so appropriate, Counting on Katherine. So please research Mrs. Kat Mrs. Katherine, learn about it. And who knows, you might become a part of space one day, maybe on ground, on earth, or maybe up in space, because we do have our space station today that takes people up to live for a couple of months or more. Again, thank you for joining us for Talk Time, and we'll see you next month for the month of March. Have a great day.